Hey guys, so as I try to finish the last part of As Chimney Sweepers Come to Dust, I'm just going to do a little video uh, talking about something I, I've been thinking about. So, a lot of people I know, and a lot of people in general, use the term guilty pleasure. Well, what exactly does that mean? Um, now, the layman's definition, of course, is something that isn't what we consider objectively good, but it's something we enjoy nonetheless. Well, the way I see it, you shouldn't be ashamed of something you like. I mean, even if it is shitty, why would you be afraid to admit that you like something? What's wrong with liking something shitty? <laughs> I mean, you know. And when I say objective, I mean things that don't meet the established criteria for what makes something good or not. Um, in film, it would be uh, the strength of the storytelling, writing, direction, editing, uh, camera work, acting, etc. Uh, when all these things come together, you get masterpieces like The Godfather or Citizen Kane. When these things don't, the results can still be quite entertaining, though not in good in the established sense. Something like Troll 2, which I did a whole video on a long time ago, uh, is definitely not good, but it's definitely entertaining. Then again, in my estimate, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Something like The Room is considered one of the worst films of all time. But it's also considered one of the most so bad it's good films of all time. <sighs> Bringing me back around to why are we afraid to admit we like something, even if we know it's not good. And the same thing can be said in writing. I like a lot of things most people wouldn't consider good, myself included. But that doesn't make them not entertaining. It doesn't make them not interesting to me. And it doesn't mean I don't have a place in my heart for it. You know? Why is something like... Somebody like William Slater, who writes young adult fiction. Well, how is his young adult fiction, which most has a stigma for being terrible, thanks to things like Twilight, Hunger Games, you know, Divergent... Maze Runner, things like that, give it a stigma. But what's the separation between Maze Runner and something like Harry Potter? Um, besides the fact that they're both young adult fiction. Well, in my opinion, Maze Runner sucks because it's in a generic, boring, lackluster story with uninspired, unoriginal characters and bad writing. But the, you know, but Harry Potter, while still young adult is the antithesis of this. Harry Potter is an interesting story. And while it may not be entirely original in its ideas of a magical school and a young wizard learning to become a great powerful guy and fight you know, the worst evil of all time, these ideas can be found in things like Wizard's Hall, The Books of Magic by Neil Gaiman, or Ursula Le Guin's Earthsea. However, just because it's not an entirely original, doesn't make Harry Potter uninteresting or ungood by any means of the imagination. Harry Potter is one of my favorite novels of all time. I consider it one novel, even though it's technically seven. Anyway, it's one of my favorite stories of all time. And it's well written. The characters are all interesting and likable. There's enough mystery, action, and excitement to keep it fresh. And it realistically portrays adolescent and adolescent feelings very well. Not to mention, it's just an interesting examination of character, human nature, themes of life, death, sadness, pain, anger, you know, the whole spectrum of human existence. Not to mention, it is a very valuable introduction to younger readers for certain things like question authority, challenge the preconceived notions of what, you know, your authority, what your government tells you. You know, that's a very valuable lesson for young readers to know. And it does it in a way that's organic and not preachy. There's a lot going on in Harry Potter. So much more going on than the tired, bored, dystopian themes of Maze Runner. But moving on from that, you know, since we're on the topic of kids' literature, how is something like Goosebumps, and I've got like several here, uh, <laughs> different from uh, well-beloved works of children's literature like Tug Everlasting? Or to go even younger, the Fudge series by Judy Bloom. What is Judy Bloom doing that R.L. Stein isn't? Well, people would say Judy Bloom is a better writer. 
uh, they would say her work tackles more mature themes in a more mature way and definitely uh, encapsulates kind of what it's like to be young. Whereas those people, the opposite side of it would say R.L. Stein is more interested in just trying to be scary for kids. And while that's true, R.L. Stein is definitely interested in scaring readers and not really trying to show them life lessons or go through themes of mature maturity, puberty, of uh, going through a divorce, with their parents, things like that. He's still entertaining. And even though I think R.L. Stein isn't the best technical writer, there are the characteristics of good writing in his work. He knows how to tell an interesting story. He knows how to write believable kid characters. Most of the time. He knows how to pace a story. He knows how to set up and pay off a suspenseful scene. Now, I'm not saying R.L. Stein is this great suspense thriller writer. Not by any means imagination. Especially in something like Goosebumps, which are more kind of off the wall and bizarre. But if you go into more adult, uh, young adult works by R.L. Stein, like the Fear Street books or some of his standalone novels like The Babysitter, he's actually a very good suspense writer and writes very realistic and more down-to-earth characters and plausible situations that could really happen. And I think just because R.L. Stein doesn't write about things like teen romance, teens going through issues like getting their first period or <laughs> contemplating abortion, or things like that doesn't make him any less a good young adult writer. It's just Judy Bloom is more popular for these things, and these things are more mature and far more important subject matter to talk about than some maniac trying to stalk a girl, is why she's considered a good young adult writer, whereas Arl Stein would be considered a not so good young adult writer. Then again, when it comes to sales, they're both pretty popular, so that ought to say something in and of itself. Now, moving into fiction for adults, what is the difference between, say, somebody like Charles Dickens and somebody like Stephen King? Well, a lot of things on the surface, definitely. They're both very different styles of writer. They write very different genres. They write very different characters, very different settings. They wrote in very different time periods with very different social mores, customs. Right, very different language. Uh, Dickens was more of a verbose writer who wrote lengthy sentences full of grammar and diction and syntax of his day, whereas King is more concise and writes more uh, in an idiosyncratic uh, colloquial style that's meant to capture more of a oral storytelling as opposed to more of a formal, obviously written on paper storytelling style. But they're both good. They're good for very different reasons, but they're both good. Um, Dickens is great. He, you know, his stories of orphans, you know, growing up poor and in terrible circumstances of horrible, abusive people around them, and ultimately becoming better people and successful in their adult lives is fantastic. He wrote very good stories. Now, they have their tropes and their common themes running throughout them, but I don't think that's a count against Dickens. It's just kind of more his territory. Stephen King, on the other hand, writes very interesting stories, usually of a horror or science fiction variety, or fantasy. But he's written lots of other genres as well. He's written straight-up drama. He's written um, post-apocalyptic fiction. He's written mystery thrillers. He's written all kinds of things. But he is still a good writer. Now, people would say Dickens is, of course, the far better writer, but that's just because, you know, this is coming from the critical angle. In academia, resorts, uh, Dickens be better because he's an established writer, he's been around for hundreds of years, and his work has never gone out of favor or out of reading. King, on the other hand, is a popular writer. In critics in the academia sense, look at popular writing as pure bullshit. However, I think Dickens and King have far more in common than they... Uh, because the, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether one is a famous classical writer like Chaucer, Chaucer or Shakespeare. What matters is just how one tells a story and how well they pull off what they're trying to do. So I think Stephen King, you know, is just as good as someone like Thomas Pynchon. <laughs> Very different, and Thomas Pynchon is a lot more of a complex of a writer as far as structure, storytelling, and even his, uh, you know, word choice and such. But what he has to say is no more interesting or better than King. So that's really, there's really not as much difference as that as, you know, we say there is. And like I said at the beginning of this video, if you like something, why be ashamed of it? Why, why can't we just have pleasures? 
Why do you have? Why do certain ones have to be quote unquote guilty pleasures? Why were you ashamed to say, yeah, I like Stephen King or I like R.L. Stein? So what? Fuck you. Like, they are both good. We like them because they are good to us, and we can even like them ironically. We can even point at their flaws and laugh at them, but still enjoy the things about them that make us laugh or make us care about the characters. So, I don't see a difference. Nor do I think there should be a difference. If you like something, like it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't try to hide it. You know, laugh, you know, like the good stuff as well as the trash. The trash is pretty entertaining in and of itself. You know. So, enjoy things like, you know, Godfather, Goodfellas, Apocalypse Now. But also, you know, keep a place and keep an open mind for things like Birdemic, The Room, Troll 2, or Rubber. These things are just as good in their own way. Much like Pension is just as good as King, and King is just as good as Dickens, and Dickens is just as good as Shakespeare. I like all those guys, for very different reasons. Some I like a lot more. I think King and Pynchon are much better storytellers and communicate their stories better. But that's just a personal opinion. So, at the end of the day, it's all subjective and it just comes down to what we like. And I don't think there's anything wrong with liking something different from someone else. To me, what matters is how well you can articulate why you like something or dislike something. And that ultimately, I think, is all that matters. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about my nonsense. I have barely any idea of what I'm talking about. And, um, yeah. Go out there and enjoy your Stephen King. Go out there and enjoy Goosebumps. Go out there and enjoy Thomas Pynchon. Go out there and read these mammoth novels by Charles Dickens. Because at the end of the day, they're all good storytellers. And that's why we keep returning to them. And that's why in 200 years from now, people will be reading Stephen King the way that we are still reading Geoffrey Chaucer and William Shakespeare now. Because they're good storytellers. And that's why we like what we like. So anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll try to another video up soon.